A television special was covering Shigaraki's impact on society. A 35-year-old company employee mentioned how scary the villain was. He for one was relieved that the guy had been killed. A 21-year-old college student said that one of her friends died during the villainous rampage. She considered Shigaraki to be the absolute worst, a killer that ruined everything for everyone. He even destroyed her friend's house. An elderly housewife held the thought that perhaps the villain couldn't stop himself. And this is actually the same old woman that encountered Shigaraki right after he slaughtered his family. At the time, she showed a bit of concern, but decided to let someone else deal with him instead. Although Shigaraki committed heinous atrocities, we're reminded that his pain and rise were facilitated by their society. A 30-year-old restaurant owner, like most others, thought the villain was just a random thug. No one had any idea that Shigaraki would become such a global menace. Between international support and domestic volunteers, Japan's reconstruction efforts were in full swing and progressing smoothly. But there were still plenty of areas that had yet to be salvaged. The damage was just too extensive. And it seems like that mysterious new character we saw before is in such an area. The League of Villains caused unprecedented devastation. The media would continue to cover its leader, Shigaraki. Deku and Spinner were staring at each other with a table between them. One of the doctors mentioned how the overburden of additional quirks were enough to begin turning Spinner into a Nomu. But the hospital had been conducting Nomu research for over a year. And since Spinner's transformation hadn't gone too far, they were able to save him. The villain wanted to know why a murderer like Deku was even here. Deku couldn't deny Spinner's claim that he's a killer. He was just here to give the guy Shigaraki's final words. Funny enough, Deku has never had an issue with killing Shigaraki. It wasn't even a possibility that he needed to come to terms with. Deku just wanted to try saving his soul. The concept of killing itself wasn't a problem. Spinner was infuriated by the thought of Deku trampling over Shigaraki's name. And Deku just focused on conveying the late villain's dying words. That to the very end, Shigaraki Tomura never stopped fighting to destroy. Spinner was confused while Deku's demeanor didn't change in the slightest. Spinner asked if the kid was sure this message was for him. Deku confirmed this. Spinner was still in disbelief as to why a message would be left for only him. He wondered about Toga, Dobby, or even Mr. Compress. But Deku made it clear that this message was exclusively for Spinner. The reptilian man remained frozen for a moment. Deku looked at him with tired eyes. Spinner gritted his teeth as he began talking about his former leader. He called the destroyer his ray of hope. He remembered the man smiling as they walked down the path of destruction together. Despite Spinner's prior dissatisfaction, Shigaraki completely shifted his outlook with their triumph over the Meta Liberation Army. Spinner's body began to shift. He mentioned how he had been oppressed for being himself, that he accepted his fate as a heteromorph and gave up on being accepted by others. Spinner didn't want to face these feelings since he knew it would only hurt him more, but he couldn't help it. His head was hitting the roof now. Shigaraki's example allowed a reject like him to dream. He felt like he was truly a part of something special, that he could finally become a person with a meaningful existence. The doctor told Spinner to settle down as he clutched onto a device, what I imagine may be some manner of suppression, but Deku simply raised a hand to stop the doctor but he did not take his eyes off of Spinner for even a second. The Lizard Hulk held Deku in his grasp as tears fell. Shigaraki was his hero. While being interviewed, a man claimed that Shigaraki was all about destruction and nothing else. As far as he could tell, the villain was just throwing a senseless tantrum, which isn't a very productive outlook when it comes to preventing such things from happening in the future. Spinner cried while remembering how Shigaraki loved video games. There was a discussion about police research uncovering details about Shigaraki's tragic backstory. One man argued that although discovering the cause is important, empathy towards a deviant should not be tolerated. He feared that such a response could cause tragedy to strike again and again. Spinner admitted that before he joined the League of Villains, he was playing League of Legends endlessly. Then he found out that Shigaraki liked all the same games as he did. The broadcast continued with a man in a suit who believed that Shigaraki should only be seen as a monster and nothing else. 
which was the complete opposite of Spinner shrinking back down and saying that Shigaraki was the first friend he ever had. Deku added that he heard Shigaraki say that the villains need a hero too, that at the core of Shigaraki's heart was the League of Villains. Deku is sure that Shigaraki saw Spinner as a friend too, which is why he wanted him to be the one to receive this message. Spinner thought to himself how blinded he had been from the attention placed on their group. He accepted that he couldn't stop what was already happening and decided to stop thinking. Sadly, he always noticed things when it was already too late. He regretted not helping Shigaraki when he was a horrific clump of quirks and body modifications. That if he had taken just one more step, then maybe, just maybe, he could have saved his hero and friend. Most of society could agree that the danger of another Shigaraki or All for One could be looming at this very moment, so they would need to remain vigilant. With the message conveyed, Deku started leaving, but Spinner asked if the heroes were going to keep fighting. Deku turned back without responding. Spinner claimed that eventually, the world would forget about Shigaraki and the League and go back to smiling like they always have. So, he would write a book. Deku just kept listening. Spinner planned to write a book about the symbol of fear and the League of Villains that lived to destroy. He refused to let the world forget. After all, the past never dies. He would spread the gospel of Shigaraki until the very end. This is an absolutely perfect end for Spinner's character. This declaration is a combination of the various forms of fanaticism that he has been exposed to throughout the series. The creation of a book is exactly how the followers of Destro spread their message to future generations. The symbol of fear concept was constructed by All for One. Living to destroy was Shigaraki's entire MO. The phrase, the past never dies, comes directly from Dobby and the mention of gospel is in line with Stain's direction. Deku suggested that Spinner make it a comic. The villain figured Deku was making fun of him and got upset. But this is actually a callback to the Captain Hero comics that inspired All for One and his brother. It's a solid suggestion, but I wonder how Spinner is being punished for his crimes. Deku told Spinner that he doesn't need to worry. He made it clear that he will never forget Shigaraki. Spinner settled down. As Deku stepped out, he shared a message of his own. He wanted Deku to tell Shoji to do his best. Shoji is the pride of the heteromorphic community at this point, an uncorrupted version of what Spinner was propped up to be during the final war. All Might and Detective Tsukauchi were in the hospital's waiting room and greeted Deku once he returned. Because of how badly his legs were damaged, All Might is now in a wheelchair, just like Endeavor. Detective Tsukauchi looks pretty tired, but has lost his war arc facial hair. The former symbol of peace wondered if Deku was able to tell Spinner everything, which Deku confirmed. The detective started to fill Deku in on what happened with Overhaul. Overhaul was visited by the former Shie Hasaikai boss. The old man told his adopted son that he looks awful. Chisaki was shaking. He thought the boss would be asleep forever. This was on account of Chisaki using his quirk to place him in a coma. And of course, without his arms, there was no way for him to undo it. But according to the boss, support items were becoming more advanced by the day. I can only imagine how much crazier it'll be in the years to come. The old man also made it clear that he wasn't the boss anymore since the organization is dead. But this character doesn't have a name other than the boss, so we'll stick with that. Overhaul cried out to the old man in dismay. The boss looked at him callously and rebuked the man for deviating from humanity and causing all of this. He reminded the villain that he tried to reach out to him and was ignored. The boss thought that maybe Kurono was too soft on him. Overhaul looked like a sniveling mess while he apologized, but the boss didn't want to hear it. He believed that the monster should be apologizing to his granddaughter for the rest of his life. He hoped that Eri would forget the man eventually, but didn't believe Chisaki should be so lucky. Like Endeavor with Dobby, the boss decided to visit his son in prison for the rest of his life and would scold him for his cruelty. Deku was grateful to Detective Tsukauchi for setting things up. The detective was happy too. This was a much better approach than having Eri see the villain once again. Deku wondered how they would be able to prevent such terrible things from happening in the future. The cop let him know that they can't. Unless Hawks could somehow multiply the number of available heroes. Deku was shocked and had no idea Hawks was capable of such a thing. But this was just a joke. 
But again, with the advancements in technology, Hawks' proclivity towards speed and efficiency, previously using his feathers like drones, and what Armored All Might was able to show the world, I could totally see Hawks as a new leader of the Hero Public Safety Commission, taking certain steps to make this joke a reality. Either way, Deku was told to brighten up since the UA first years would be arriving today. They couldn't have the savior of the world looking like a gloomy killer. But Deku argued that the hero course doesn't have many extracurricular activities, so it wouldn't be like he'd be seeing them much anyways. Back at UA, a bunch of girls were squealing the names of Shoto and Bakugo. The two heroes were being swarmed by their new first year fangirls. Shoto wondered what was going on, while Bakugo believed that they should all be expelled. Deku was shocked to see how crazy the first year students are, while Mineta was annoyed by the sight of these two guys living his dream and rejecting it. If Deku doesn't have a fan club too, despite saving the world, we'll have to blame the new haircut. Overall, this was a pretty calm chapter. Personally, Spinner and Unarmed Overhaul aren't super interesting to me, but it's good to have closure on those fronts. The next chapter will most likely be dedicated to Uraka. Between that and these fangirls, it may be a major one for her and Deku, which is bound to attract a lot more attention. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.